Good afternoon, everyone. All right, before we go over page five and page six, I'm gonna share an area and perimeter flow cap video that I know you remember from class, okay? And then we'll get started and go over page five and page six. And I also have my Elmo with me so I can show you everything on paper. It's the year 2060 and you're colonizing Mars. You're about to buy a plot of land, but you have a dog and you want to make sure he has enough space to run around. You also want to build a fence so he can't escape. So first you want to know how big the backyard is, and then you want to know how far it is around. To figure this out, you have to find the area. That's the space inside for a rectangle, it's length and width are multiplied. And perimeter, the distance around a shape, just add the sides together and then you'll be great. With the area, that's the space inside for a rectangle, it's length and width are multiplied. And perimeter, the distance around a shape, just add the sides together and then you'll be great. Yeah, here I am on Mars, trying to find out the size of my backyard. Well, it's a rectangle, right? So what if we cut it into squares of the same size? That are one unit long by one unit wide. These are called square units. Add them all up. Surprise! You got 72 square units or feet, cause that's the unit we're using. But who has time to count squares? Length times width is the quickest way to get there. Yeah, that's how you find the area. A nice little formula that'll take care of you. And I need to hurry cause my dog is starving. Let's find the area so I can feed Marvin. My yard is nine feet long by eight feet wide. I get the area when I multiply each side. And nine times eight is 72. But here's another way for you to think it through. Basically, you take the rows column and figure how many square units fit inside of those. Yo, my backyard is wide, eight feet. So that's eight rows with nine square units in each so multiply the eight rows by the nine square units you get 72 yep you knew it the area that's the space inside for a rectangle it's length and width are multiplied and perimeter the distance around a shape just add the sides together and then you'll be great with the area that's the space inside for a rectangle it's length and width are multiplied and perimeter the distance around a shape just add the sides together and then you'll be great now I've got my area for my yard on Mars And there's plenty of room for Marvin to live large But now I need a fence Cause I heard the animals on Mars could be intense So I'll need the perimeter The distance around my whole yard How do you get it? Yeah, just add up the length of the sides 9 plus 8 plus 8 plus 9 Is a perimeter of 34 feet And oh yeah, that's regular units And not units squared So let's take a look from another angle to get the perimeter of a square or rectangle, you add two widths plus two lengths. Here's a formula, don't forget to say thanks. Two times length plus two times width to get a square or rectangle's perimeter quick. So let's try it with my Martian backyard. Come on, get ready, y'all. It's not that hard. Two times the length of nine is 18. And two times the width of eight is 16. And 16 plus 18 is 34. Now, if I could stop Marvin from making a dirty floor, Seriously. All right, I hope you enjoyed that lovely video that we always enjoy in class, area and perimeter. Now we're going to jump right into page five and page six of um, our work for today. And then we're go I'm going to talk about what's going to happen for tomorrow, and then we'll be done. Okay. All right, now taking a look at number 22, it says find possible rectangles that have a perimeter of 16 feet. Do they have the same area? What generalization can you make from your answer? Now, we're not going to worry about the generalization. We're going to worry about do they have the same area, and we're going to worry about the possible rectangles that have a perimeter of 16 feet. Remember, with perimeter, we add up the sides. Okay, so I'm going to show you on my screen really quick. All right, so as you see, I've drawn four rectangles, and I've already created a somewhat perimeter for them, but let's make sure they're correct. I say they're 16, but let's double check, okay? So... What I have is for this first rectangle, we're worried about this first rectangle right here. We have seven, one, seven, one. So seven plus seven, we know equals 14, plus one equals 15, plus one equals 16. So does this have a perimeter of 16 feet? Yes, it does. I added all the sides. I'm gonna check this one now. Okay, so this one, five plus five, we know that equals 10. 10 plus three equals 13. 13 plus three equals 16. Does this one have a perimeter of 16 feet? Yes, it does. This one right here, 
2 plus 2 equals 4. All right, and 6 plus 6 equals 12. 12 plus 4 equals 16. Does this have a perimeter of 16 feet? Yes, it does. Check in that last one. We have 4 plus 4 equals 8. This 4 plus 4 we know equals 8, so 8 plus 8 equals 16. So does this rectangle have a perimeter of 16 feet? The answer is yes, okay? And to answer the second part of the question, it says, do they have the same area? Now, it is possible for rectangles to have the same perimeter, but different areas. So we can check it out just to see. 1 times 7, we know equals 7, linked times width, 3 times 5 equals 15, okay? 6 times 2 equals 12, and 4 times 4 equals 16, okay? So it is possible for them to have different areas, but possible to have the same um, perimeter, okay? All right, going to the next, the next question, it says the perimeter of rect rectangle S is 16 inches. The perimeter of rectangle T is 14 inches. Both rectangles have the same area. Find the area and the dimensions of each rectangle. Now this pretty much goes back to the same question, somewhat the same question that we just talked about, and that is 12 square inches. Rectangle S would be two inches times six inches because two plus two plus six plus six, okay? And then rectangle T would be three inches times four inches. So three times four equals 12, and then three plus four plus four plus three plus three, okay? All right, let's see. Let's go to the next one, number 24. It says, Natasha brought some green grapes with a mass of 47 grams. She also brought some purple grapes with a mass of 61 grams. List two combinations of the types of weights shown that would balance Natasha's grapes, okay? I'm gonna flip my camera here so we can do it together. All right, now first things first, if it says she brought some green grapes with a mass of 47 grams, that's what that represents right here, green grapes, 47 grams, all right? And then we have a mass, a, per, a mass of 61 grams for the purple grapes. So we have purple grapes right here, at 61 grams. Now, in order to figure out what two combinations would balance Natasha's grapes, we need to first figure out how much she has total. So 1 plus 7 equals 8. We're going to add that 61 plus 47. 1 plus 7 equals 8. 6 plus 4 equals 10. Okay. I have 108. So it would be 108 grams. Now we need to figure out two combinations that would equal 108 grams based off the picture that they gave you. Now they gave you a, a symbol of 100 gram, a 10 gram, and a one and one of the grams. Okay. Now I'm going to give a combination for you. An example would be you can either have 100 gram weights and eight one gram rate, gram weights, which is what I have. So I had 100 gram weight, and then I have eight one gram weights, or you can have 10 gram weights, as which is what I did, and eight one gram weights, which is what I had as well. As long as they add together to equal Natasha's grapes, which is 108 grams, okay? All right, our next question, it says, Carlos is making a square picture frame. The length of one side is eight inches. What is the perimeter of the picture frame? Now, when we're thinking about this, remember we're thinking about, pic we're thinking about perimeter, we're thinking about the square picture frame. And when, we're, when we talk about squares, that means all sides are the same length, which means all sides are equal. Okay. Okay, so if all sides on the square are the same, that means not only is this one side that they told us the length of one side is eight, that means another side is eight, the other side is eight, and the very last side is eight. All four sides would be eight. Okay, now if they ask you for the perimeter, all you're going to do is add all of the sides because perimeter, we add all of the sides up. So eight plus eight equals 16. And we know the other eight plus eight equals 16. Now we add 16 plus 16, okay? Six plus six equals 12. I put down my two, I carry my one. One plus two equals two. One plus one equals two. Two plus one equals three. So 32. So your answer should be not just 32, 32 inches is what they used in the question, okay? So your answer should be B, 32 inches. All right, this next question, it says, Raina drew a quadrilateral. It has exactly one pair of parallel sides. What shape did Raina draw? Okay, when we think about one pair of parallel sides, we're thinking about a trapezoid. Now, I know I just gave you the answer, that was the point. I want to show you exactly what the parallel sides look like on a trapezoid so that we understand this question and why it's a trapezoid, okay? So take a look, I'm about to flip my camera so you can see. 
Okay, so once again, the answer was C, trapezoid. I told you the answer right away because I wanted to show you exactly what the parallel, one pair of parallel sides look like on the trapezoid, okay? Now, we know what a trapezoid is. I did my best to draw one. Now, taking a look here, our parallel sides would be the top half. That means that line is gonna keep going and never cross along with this one. These lines would never cross to each other. Whereas these lines right here, this line and that line would cross, okay? So they have exactly one pair. Now, when we say one pair, we know pair equals two of something. So it, it, it has, this shape has one pair. It has one set of two, okay? So one of two pair, of two lines, two parallel lines, okay? All right, we're on the last page here, number 27. It says Sue ran two six mile on Monday and three six mile on Tuesday. Which date did she run farther? Use the number line to help solve. Now, when we take a look at this, we don't really necessarily need to write anything down because we know exactly how this would go. If we have a number line and it, we, we're given two fractions with six in the denominator, that means this number line will be in six. So after zero would be one six, after one six would be two six, after two six would be three six, after three six would be four six, after four six would be five six, and that whole, that one would represent six six, the whole fraction. Okay, so if it said Sue ran two six mile on Monday and three six mile on Tuesday, which day did she run farther? Clearly, it would be Tuesday because it, three is greater than two, okay? We compare those numerators when we have the same denominator, okay? Especially on a number line, that's easy to tell when we're, when we're using the number line correctly. All we're doing is counting in order, okay? Three comes after two, okay? So your answer would be B, Tuesday. Next question, it says, Chad and Amanda went shopping for their birthdays. They spent 33 minutes in the store, in the toy store, and 47 minutes in the clothing store. How long did Chad and Amanda spend shopping? Okay, so this one is a simple addition problem because it said, how long did Chad and Amanda spend shopping? And so that means we're thinking about in general. So if there's 30, 33 minutes spent in the toy store and 47 minutes in the clothing store, we're gonna add those up. All right, so here I am with my addition. I'm simply going to do seven plus three. Seven plus three equals 10. I put down my zero, I carry my one. One plus four equals five. Five plus three equals eight. So you could have said 80 minutes. Now, is that the only answer? Nope, because we know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So you could have said 60, you could have said, actually, no, excuse me. You could have said one hour and 20 minutes. So one hour and 20 minutes, or you could have just said 80 minutes. Okay. All right, our next question, number 29, it says, Cheryl has two fabrics. Which best describes the relationship between the shaded area of each fabric? I'm sure you're able to guess right away, or simply tell right away, that it was A, one-fourth is greater than one-eighth. Okay, so you can look at those two fabrics. That's pretty simple, looking at the shaded, looking at those parts, okay? Number 30. It says, in all city swim meet started at 10.30 a.m. It ended at 4.45 p.m. How long did the swim meet last? So we're doing that elapsed time here. I know elapsed time is everyone's favorite. Take a deep breath. Now we're going to get right on through, step by step. All right, so if we know that it started at 10.30 a.m. and ended at 4.45 p.m., we're gonna work on hour increments here. So it's going from out, let's start from going from hour to hour, and then we'll work our way to the minutes, okay? So from 10.30 to 11.30 was probably how long? You got it, one hour. From 11.30 to 12.30 was probably how long? Another hour, okay? 12.30 to 1.30 is another hour. 1.30 to 2.30 is another hour. Oh, excuse me. Making mistakes here. One hour. Okay. 12.30, or no, excuse me, 2.30 to 3.30 is another hour. Now it's set to 4.45, so we can keep going. 3.30 to 4.30 is another hour. Now at this point, we've reached our limit with going from hour to hour. So now we can add all these hours up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So, so far we're at six hours, okay? Now, if we need to get from 4.30 
to 445. Now we're focusing on the minutes, 445 minus 430. Okay, five minus zero equals five, four minus three equals one, and then of course, four minus four equals zero. So we're focused on 15 extra minutes, okay? So that means it's six hours and 15 minutes. Six hours and 15 minutes. So our answer should have been, excuse me, I'm sorry, you couldn't see that. There we go. All I did was do that subtraction, of course, and then I broke down my answer six hours and 15 minutes. We counted all the hours, then we counted the minutes. Our answer is D, six hours and 15 minutes. All right. And that concludes our instruction for today. I'm going to play a quick video for you, and you'll be on your way. People say to me, you're a bear. Why do you need to know how to tell time? And I tell, <clears throat> sorry, had something in my throat. Anyways, just because I'm a bear, I still need to know how to tell time. There are numbers on the face of a clock. They stand for hours, but come here, let's talk. It takes one hour for the hour hand to move. From hour number one to hour number two. Then from two to three and three to four. The numbers stand for hours, but wait, there's more. I've got a secret. Okay, you can spread it. The numbers on the clock also stand for minutes. You heard me. I can't say it any louder. There are 60 minutes in every hour. Each of these little marks stands for one minute. There are 60 all together. Now do you get it? When the hour hand moves from one hour to the next, the minute hand goes all the way around. Yep, the minute hand is fast. Really? You bet. In five minutes, it moves from one number to the next. When it reaches a new number, five minutes have gone. By. To know the minutes, skip count by five. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Bet you never thought you learned that from a grizzly. Oh, and when we reach the 60th minute, double zero is the way that it's written. Sometimes the hour hand points between two numbers, but it's not a choice. The hour is the number the hand is after. Skip count by fives to find the minutes faster. Sometimes the hour hand points between two numbers, but it's not a choice. The hour is the number the hand is after. Skip count by fives to find the minutes faster. Listen, remember my tips and tricks for telling time to the nearest five minutes? See the two numbers the hour our hands in between uh -huh. the number it's after is the hour indeed here it's in between the two and the three yeah. it's after the two so that's the hour see uh -huh. look at the minute hands all right we skip count by fives to find the time this is fun like a bucket of honey we go five ten fifteen twenty wow. now we see it's 20 minutes past two that's 220 time for a bear shampoo here the hour's nine it's not yet ten Let's skip count to find the minutes again. Let's do it. Let's do it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. It's 9, 35. Let's hibernate all night. Sometimes the hour hand points between two numbers, but it's not a choice. The hour is the number the hand is after. Skip count by fives to find the minutes faster. Sometimes the hour hand points between two numbers, but it's not a choice. The hour is the number the hand is after. Skip count by fives to find the minutes faster. Let's tell time to five minutes. The hour hand points between two digits. The hour is the number the hand is after. Skip count by fives to find the minutes faster. 